Good afternoon. Well, it's afternoon where I am in, uh, right now, but uh, uh, yeah, so uh, welcome to another video. Uh, my name's the Reverend Simon Archer and I am the priest in charge, basically vicar, of uh, the parish of Arbury in Castletown on the Isle of Man. And today I thought we'd um, come and see the, the other, my two churches. Um, this is Arbury Church, otherwise known as St Columba, uh, but everyone knows it as Arbury Church. And I thought I'd give you a little tour of uh, the second of my churches and uh, I mentioned that uh, um, well, I mentioned that uh, my churches are quite different, so hopefully uh, you'll have watched the other video of uh, St Mary's on the Harbour in Castletown. Um, I mentioned there that uh, that was in town and uh, my other church was uh, a lot more rural. You can probably tell if you can hear the, the, the crows, the rooks, there they are here in the trees. Um, and you can see it's uh, where I am and where it's, it's very peaceful. Uh, I'm in the car park at the moment, um, but I'm gonna have a, a little wander around first of all. Um, and then uh, we'll, um, we're heading to the church to have a look around the church. I've got some stuff to drop off and uh, some bits for tomorrow's services. It's Saturday today, so we've got some services, uh, service here and at Castletown. I'll be taking both those services. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day. I get, uh, what, sorry, no, we're on the Isle of Man. It's wet and windy and horrible here today on the Isle of Man. No, it's not. Um, it's amazing how many people told me February would be um, so awful. Wait till February. February's terrible. It's um, an awful month. We've had so many good days. It's been so beautiful. We've had some torrential rain and some windy days and storms and things but uh, in January and February. But uh, actually, today's yet another fantastic day. So... Um, rather than you looking at this ugly mug for any longer, I'm going to start walking around uh, the church grounds and show you what it's all about and uh, show you the churchyard, I think. Uh, tell you a little bit of history. I'm not going to do big history lessons about the churches. There's some stuff online you can find if you want to. Uh, maybe at another point we'll do a little bit of a, uh, a more background on the churches, but uh, uh, this is just a stunning spot. Anyway, let's uh, take this camera off me and, and show you around the churchyard a little bit. So as you can see, again, terrible day here on the Isle of Man. Uh, this is the kind of new churchyard part. Uh, we have a section. So the churchyards here are a little bit different in that they, they're used by uh, lots of uh, denominations, other faiths and things like that. So it's uh, uh, and non-faith burials as well. So the idea being that they're, they're, they're for everyone's use. Um, and we have this stunning churchyard here, here and uh, in Arbury. And Arbury's in sort of um, Balabeg. Uh, Balabeg and Colby are roughly the areas I cover, and sort of areas surrounding that. But uh, let's have a little walk down the car park, and you see the church just in front of me there. And we'll have a we'll have a proper walk around the churchyard as well, because I'm sure there's people here who will be watching. Maybe some people will be watching, going, oh, "I wonder if uh, the, the, the he'll have a look at the grave where I've got a loved one." Um, so we'll walk slowly round, show you some of the, the stones and the memorials here. Perhaps I shouldn't show all of them because I could be fit for ages. It's quite a large churchyard, but to give you an idea anyway at least. You'll see a lot of names that repeat and repeat and repeat. There's uh, some very common names on the island. I'll point some of those out perhaps. Well, oh, ground is a bit, ooh, a bit moist underfoot actually. Corin, Clag, is that Clag? 
think I'm pronouncing it right, I'm saying clag. Krellin. A lot of these names. We're moving into the, uh, an older part of the churchyard. It's not the oldest part, but one of the older parts. What I love here is just its position is just stunning. And you often get, there's a farm next door. There's farms all around here and you often hear cows. And um, we have some glebe land, which is some land owned by the church, which is rented from us um, at a quite a low rent. Uh, we want that to continue really because uh, that keeps, uh, maintains the glebe land, hopefully helps the farmer out and uh, gives us a little bit of income. But yeah, you can see in the distance the sea over there, some of the hills. So nice. I spend a little bit of time here actually. It is just a beautiful place to wander around. Um, some quite important names in this churchyard. We'll come to one of them in a moment. But we'll walk all the way down to the front entrance before we go into the church. That's the uh, church. Always good to see. This church is open every single day. Open from sort of morning till, till sort of uh, coming up for evening time. So the door is open as always. Which means people can wander in and out as they please. Let's take you to this, this grave, which is one of the most perhaps well-known graves we have here. And this is for Captain John Quilliam. Uh, when first Lieutenant or Lieutenant on board HMS Victory, he served with Vice Admiral Lord Nelson at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. Uh, also in Terry is the Stevenson family tomb is his wife, Margaret Christian Quilliam. Um, so that's, uh, she was 1770 to 1844. Um, so he, was, he served, served for, aboard HMS Victory and was uh, really important in the, in the, the Battle of Trafalgar. Um, I believe um, there was something about him uh, fixing the, the, the rudder on the boat when it was damaged and uh, basically incredibly important in that victory. Yeah, there's his, uh, there's his tomb. And those big stones on there are really handy to keep things from blowing away. Uh, but we have a Trafalgar Day and we always uh, um, we have Quilliam lectures here uh, where people talk about all sorts of history, but naval history in particular. Last, last one we had there, we actually ate uh, naval food of the time, which actually wasn't as bad as you might think. I'll come over there in a moment because we'll have a walk down. But um, I don't know about you, but I, uh, ch churchyards and cemeteries are actually really peaceful, beautiful places. I know people sometimes, after watching lots of um, films, kind of think of them as quite scary places, but I never have done. And, you know, quite as a priest, I'm quite often here in places like this of an evening, of a night time, and it's very peaceful. Never, never anything to worry about. Um, just lovely, peaceful places. This is really well kept as well. We have a fantastic uh, churchyard maintenance company. Angus comes in with the team and looks after it. And uh, I'll tell you about that in a moment, but um, yeah. It's not the worst place to be laid to rest, that's for sure. Costain, very important name. We've actually got Henry uh, has his funeral coming up actually. Um, uh, an old, old, uh, old uh, family of, uh, and he's uh, he was a farmer, uh, Henry Costain, very important person. His son is the captain of Russian Parish, I believe. If I get that right, Paul, an incredible singer as well. So we're showing you some of this churchyard. I'll have a little walk around the front, and then we'll walk back up again. I'll look at my board, poster board and probably realise that there's loads of stuff that's out of date, but that's fine. We'll get there. Uh, 
A few cars coming past, but not busy as you can see. It's not a, it's quite a main road really, and it's uh, never, never too busy. And we do have a single bell in our church, in our tower. A sheep bar in at me. Um, just over the fence here is the uh, the really old part of the churchyard. Um, the way that's kept in order is sheep graze on it. So every now and again, the guy, uh, the farmer who owns the or looks after the glebe land, and uh, we rent out that land to him. He brings his uh, sheep over, or some of the sheep, and they spend some time enjoying the grass and keeping it down for us. Beautiful skies today. It is chilly though. It is chilly. So if I've got multiple layers on, there's a good reason. It's because it's uh, about eight degrees, seven or eight degrees up here. It's not unusual to find very odd graves that fall in like that. Sometimes it's families who are long gone people to look after them anymore and they do deteriorate over the time even uh, with the, especially with the weather on this island but where they're such ancient graves as well yes yeah, quite a substantial churchyard yeah, some of the more recent ones are like 1911 what have we got here Uh, to the memory of John Costain. Of the Balamoa. Oh, yeah, I can't read that. 1899, 1829? I think it might be 1878. Yeah, you could have a good walk around there and you'd find some very, very old graves. Oh, the clouds coming over the sun at the moment. Oh, that's what I was going to take you. So a little walk down here. It's another entrance to the churchyard. This would be the water butt for the, when the sheep are here. Amazing. And here we have a pulpit, an outside pulpit. There you go. These steps lead up to the pulpit from which announcements of public interest were prom promulgated to parishioners of Kirk Arbury. So, Kirk Arbury being Arbury Church, or Kirk Arbury, um, or Chapel of Arbury. But Kirk Arbery, you know, plaque presented by Le, uh, Leigh Column Killia, so that's pronounced, well, St. Columbus Day Festival, on the 26th of June 1997, it's not that long ago, to commemorate the death of St. Columba in 597 AD. This church is dedicated to St. Columba. Indeed, it is. So you have um, an old sort of style, if you like, in a stepping point to come into the yard, where you keep the sheep out. And then we have our pulpit. Let's step up to the pulpit, shall I? I'm hoping this is sound and that I can get up here. Yes, I can. There you go. So any announcements to the parish could be made from here. We have got a beautiful house up here. Do a clearing this off of it, actually. There's a few twigs and brambles and stuff that like to come up. Though it's actually really well kept. Oh, police cone, there we go. Step past the police cone. Church is 
tend to accumulate cones. They're useful when you have funerals. You need to mark sections off and keep sections clear. Costain again on that one. Harrison, another Costain, another Costain. 1821, 1883, 1860. Right, oh, I've got work to do. I've got to put some stuff in the, in the church. Shall we have a look around the church then? Probably not talking as much as I usually do because I just find this place so peaceful. I don't just wander. Quite often you'll find uh, uh, the uh, church main churchyard maintenance group, um, company, I say Angus, in here looking after it. All right, setting aside. So welcome to Arbury Church. We have this great big door here, always open, people can come in. Um, what's quite interesting, actually I'll, I'll show you this. So this is uh, a window, um, a stained glass window, and you'll see at the bottom it says, Light of the World. Remember that because there's an interesting fact about this church coming up. Beautiful. All right, let's uh, head inside, shall we? And you'll see lights come on. So to help people when they visit the church, find their way around, um, some lights come on automatically. So it doesn't light up the complete place, but um, it helps to um, people find their way around if you like. So we have that now. Have some lovely photos of some of the things that have happened in the past here. Hopefully we'll add um, some collections of photos from my own ministry here that would be nice I'm sure we'll we'll do that at some point uh, let's find the right key and you can head in with me into the vestry close up the register That'd be good uh, right so I have my bag and I have some of these some con celebration wafers because we'd run out here and I got some from Castle Town. A bit of a map of the uh, churchyard. Should we get some lights on? Let's get some lights on so you can actually see. Look at that, how many buttons, lots to learn, there you go, we're on manual now so it won't automatically switch the lights on, if you stay too still what happens is uh, the lights will go off, so we don't have them going off while we're walking around, so put those con celebration wafers in there, the pew sheets, so I produce a weekly pew sheet, um, What have you got on our pew sheet this week? So we ch I've changed it slightly. So it's more like a magazine. Um, and we've got World Day of Prayer. Uh, that's happening on Friday. We've got um, the bishop who is the uh, commissary bishop with oversight to the diocese. While well, we don't have our own bishop, he's doing a Lent reflection. I've uh, got a Lent course. We've got services going on. Lots of stuff. Right. What have we got here? We have, let's put my bag away. I'll leave my bag here, that'd be easy. Um, look at that. How many churches have got a great big model boat in there, like this, <laughs> in there, quite a modern boat. This is a HMS Quilliam, I mentioned about Captain Quilliam before, uh, and was uh, commissioned by a local group which celebrates the many maritime links with the parish of Arbury. So a very maritime parish, we've actually got permission to fly, fly the uh, particular flag and I can't remember what it is but um, like we're allowed to fly even though it's usually only allowed to be flown from ships 
and we get the we're allowed to fly it. Um, and I can't remember which one it is. I say I'm not here for a history talk. I wouldn't know it. Um, da -da -da -da. Let's have a look. So again, you'll see lots of things about Quilliam here. Coat of arms there. Um, and this is kind of just a sitting area, an open area at the back of the church. Look at that, beautiful. Oh, should we go upstairs actually? That's a good view. That's a good view. So we're gonna, what we do is we're gonna head upstairs. I'm gonna grab the right key for the organ loft. And we'll have a nose up there. And lots of people, again, if you're watching this and you happen to be local, you may have had a time when you've sat up here, there is a seating area up here and people do come up here to, for, for when we have services where the place is full. <sighs> Climbing the stairs. There are seat, the seating up here that is used. A wonderful organ. Not bad, eh? I love this view of the church, actually. It's quite nice. Just pausing there for a moment, why not? So, we do have a, cool. I'm showing you all the secrets now. Bell tower, some lovely natural light. Obviously church so storage as always. And our bell. All right. The, the workings inside of the organ. Now I'll head back downstairs and I'll put that key back before I forget. Let's have an explore of the church. Look at that. Beautiful. We have our memorial. Uh, 1914 to 1918 and 1939 to 1944, five wars. World War I, World War II. Uh, those names are read out on Remembrance Sunday. I have to make sure I pronounce them correctly. Apparently I did all right last time, so we'll have that. Have to, yeah, have it phonetically. Oh, we've got the Stations of the Cross up as well at the moment. Let's show you some of these windows. Let's do the windows, shall we? So this is, all things bright and beautiful, the Lord God made them all. Uh, in celebration of children and their teachers and in memory of Ida and of Arthur Krellin, headmaster of Arbury School, 1948 to 1976, given with the love of their family in 2009. Lovely, beautiful window. You get some uh, little details in the dresses and things. Wonderful. These are all original artworks that were created as Stations of the Cross. We'll have a Stations of the Cross service, probably in Holy Week. I say probably, we definitely in Holy Week. Here's uh, the Saint Columba. Obviously after which the, the church is, after whom the church is dedicated, if that's all right, phrasing for it, I don't know. And we have this. I'm not going to keep reading every single one, but another beautiful window. And we have our Captain John Quillian window. So these are, I should point out, these are like box pews almost. They've got doors on them still, which is fun, except when people leave them open and you're trying to walk down. But uh, 
this one I'll read to you. Uh, they that go down to the sea in ships, these see the works of the Lord. Captain John Quilliam, born in Moran, 1771, he served under Admiral Lord Nelson in HMS Victory at Trafalgar, 1805. Dated, died 1829 and buried in Arbury Churchyard, as we saw earlier. An honest man, the noblest work of God. <laughs> Beautiful. Some amazing windows in here. Don't forget, if you're visiting the Isle of Man or thinking of coming over, uh, this church is open every day, so you can absolutely come and visit. And it will be open, and you can come in here and take photos. It will be very welcome. It's the Mount of Olives. It's quite a dark window, but actually, it, uh, it really does... Um, shine when the light shining through it's incredible i do like a nice simple window as well i actually like clear windows i'll be honest a lot of the time a bit more lighting it's a nice simple design here this is so i always like to give people a view so we do both east and west facing well, we could do north facing but we don't we do well not at the north side of the altar but we don't we do um, east and west facing services, so we do both here. And that's my view from the altar. And where I go to give my terribly awful sermons. They're a wonderful bunch here. They do give you some good feedback on your sermons. Yeah, that's where I stand. Isn't it a beautiful church? I think both, I'm so fortunate to have two such amazing churches and so different. Um, yeah, so there's two very similar windows and that's why I was pointing out earlier. So the light of the world So the one at the front and the one that's we, um, a little bit after that, this one here. Um, what else is there to show you? I don't know. I think that's what we wanted to show you anyway. So just to have a little look around the church, see what it's like. Uh, we don't have any separate rooms with this one. No church hall. There is a parish hall, which we've used in the past for Sunday clubs. We do have young people that come here, got some children's and fat children and families. Uh, it's been a fin uh, fantastic church for that. Um, not as much as they used to have in the past, so we're, we're going to have some work to do. All right, so let's uh, turn lights off. Make sure you do the right switches. Switch it back to auto. And then, have I got the right keys? Yes, I do. I can look up, grab my bag. I'll have a little bit wander around the churchyard, I think. It doesn't have to be too long. I'm already at half an hour. It's amazing how much time you can spend here and not realise it. Right, let's grab my bag. Lovely. Move a little bit. It's okay, should we get any sheep in there? <sighs> Clouds covering that sun a bit at the moment. It's supposed to be less cloudy at this point. All right, maybe it's breaking through.
If there's somewhere I can stop for a moment to do the final parts, it's uh, stand looking over this fence because, or fence, wall. And this field, quite often, will be absolutely full of flowers. Not quite there at the moment, but I'm sure it will be again. And if you can make that out, but the sun is starting to shine off that sea and make it all golden. You do get some times in the afternoon where it gets absolutely stunning with the light shining off the sea and everything just looks gold, like shimmering gold everywhere. Come on, you can do it. There we go, tracking enabled. I should be able to do this now. <sighs> So that's it really, I just wanted to kind of give you a little tour of Arbury. Didn't want to make it too long. All my videos seem to go on for too long because I talk too much. Enjoy it far too much talking to myself. Nobody else here, very peaceful. So it's my two churches. I might have more churches in the future, who knows? Um, the way things are going, things change. But um, uh, the ministry here is just incredible. This, I mean, people are so supportive and friendly. I might be very fortunate in this church, to be absolutely honest. It's, a, it's an amazing place, and uh, the people here are particularly kind and supportive. But, uh, yeah, it's a great spot, a great spot. And having two such different churches really, I think, keeps your, your ministry fresh because whilst we're talking about what the ministry and the, the, the worship is going to look down, like down in Castletown and maybe some more contemporary stuff and getting a music group together and all sorts of things, and here we're, we've moved... Uh, for a couple of our services, we're well, not moved. They've, they had it before, but we're we're going with real, really getting back to the prayer book and um, kind of 1662 and um, a, a really traditional Eucharistic service, which I think is fantastic. Um, it does give us um, some uh, interesting options amongst the two churches, and it also offers people different choices some people really like contemporary worship and something at like the middle of the road or m more charismatic if you like but other people really enjoy something that's more up the candle as they say and i think it's great that we can can kind of offer both in this parish it's not about um consumerist choice it's about what feeds the spirit and um understanding that different worship affects people in different ways and, and coming closer to God is what's important and perhaps not so much that we have to do it in a certain way in a certain style style is just style tradition is something else and our theology and, and tradition is is probably a little bit more important um, this place is it, it enables people to worship however they please um, because there's so much choice of of worship around um, around the island there's perhaps it is limited in some ways, but um, these two churches offer a great uh, contrast, which I, I think uh, keeps my ministry fresh, keeps me thinking. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's just a, it's a great place to be, it really is. Um, I'm going to continue making some more videos. I did promise that I'll do some where I go out for some walks and get somewhere quite rural and perhaps do some scripture readings and things like that. That will be coming. At the moment, just want to show you both churches, do a couple of walks, things like that. Um, and then we'll, we'll go to some other events, and uh, especially as the, the, the spring comes and, and it start, begins to warm up. Um, it's definitely something we will um, look to do, change things around a bit and show you some of the, the many amazing places there are here and um, the wonderful events that we have, Lake Colum Kilia. St Columba's Day where there's a, a really traditional kind of fate if you like but something a bit more than that um, the uh, Castletown Festival which will be incredible the uh, Tim Bath Race although I'm in it so I don't know how I'm going to film it when I'm in it but maybe I can 
train someone to use my camera to make sure we get some footage of that. I'm sure you'll love seeing me sinking in a tin bath. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit more of an idea of um, what this place is like, um, how beautiful it is. Look, it follows me all around. You should be able to hear me still. Look at that. Um, how amazing this place is, how beautiful the Isle of Man is, um, and all the many reasons you should have for coming and visiting. Why was my phone beeping at us? I was worried then for a minute I'd done something to my camera. As far as I know, I'm still recording. Um, but just how beautiful this place is. I want to encourage people to come here. I want to encourage people to visit the island on holidays, on retreats. Um, there's a, a retreat house that's run uh, called Tai de Vey, um, but there's plenty of places you can retreat to here. Um, it's just beautiful. So yeah, hopefully encourage people to come and visit, come and, come and live maybe, or for people who are looking for a different life. Um, there's definitely huge positives for moving to the island, even if it's a little bit pricey in the first place. Um, and uh, God, that sun's beautiful. And uh, hopefully we'll see friends and family of ours coming and staying with us and visiting over the coming weeks and months and years even. Um, I can't say much more. You know what I'm like. I, I, I'm always going on about how amazing this place is. And you'll probably get bored of that, but it really is. Um, I watch a, a, a guy who does camping called Paul Messner. I think I've got that right. Is it Messner or Messer? Paul Messner, I think it is. Um, and uh, he's always talking about uh, the places uh, where he camps and how wonderful they are. And I just think, well, actually, I'd love to invite him over here. I think he'd really enjoy it. Um, it's such a, a beautiful spot for camping and wild camping and walking and hiking and, um, and just a great place to visit. So, yeah, over the coming days, weeks, months, years, I'll hopefully add some more to the collection um maybe you'll have watched some of his videos get an idea of that getting outside is good for mental health to get out and camp and rain carlo is always um their adventures as well uh exploring the Thaltons and walks on the isle of man they're much more knowledgeable than i am of course because they're actually from the isle of man it makes a big difference um and uh, have great history here um and uh so i'll, I'll, I'll perhaps i'll pop some links if i can if i remember to for a couple of people, perhaps you should uh, watch the videos of um, to get an idea of what, obviously well, how good it is to be outdoors, but also particularly Isle of Man. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it really. I'm kind of waffled. I thought I'd walk around and see how the camera works, follow me and you get to see different views behind me and uh, understand what an absolutely stunning place this is. I'll go down, there you go, church just behind me there. Um, but hey, do I need to ha find a shot uh, that will work as the thumbnail? But uh, maybe this will do um, right at the very end. Uh, but I hope uh, you'll um, subscribe to the page. It doesn't cost you anything. Subscribing on YouTube is just literally you saying I'd like to see more of these videos and more of this person um, sharing these videos. And uh, you, can, um, you can also like the video. Uh, liking the video just helps it with uh, getting out to other people because more people who like the video the more people will go it, 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 YouTube will basically push it up and so oh, some people like this more people might like this and we'll share it around um, and um, if you want to share it with other people um, it'd be good to do that as well um, that really helps out if you kind of say oh, why don't you watch this video um, good thing to do but um we're, we're just coming up to, I think, is it five or six months here on the island? And I'm just over four, coming up for five months in ministry here. And it's been incredible. And uh, looking forward now as we're heading towards spring and the daffodils are coming out. Plenty of daffodils about. Um, heading towards spring and we'll see the lambs in the field. And, uh, and the joy is this, uh, this part of God's creation becomes greener and full of flowers. And those crows are being loud, aren't they? Crows, rooks, whatever they are. You keep it down, filming here. Um, it's just going to be great to see this island sort of kind of emerge from winter into spring and then summer, which 
will be something else. So I hope you'll join me for that as uh, we wait, make our way through the year. Uh, take care. God bless. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.